Hello and welcome to our presentation where we will dive deep into the Great Barrier Reef on AWS. My name is Lauren Housko and I will be introducing you to David Crossman from the Australian Institute of Marine Science. Together we will explore how AIMS are saving time and money on AWS to benefit one of our greatest natural wonders. Today David and I will take you through the problem that the Australian Institute of Marine Science have been able to solve on AWS. I will give a brief overview of who AIMS are and what they do. David will then contextualise the problem as a data problem and why this is so. He will then dive into the projects that AIMS have been working on, the technical detail behind the solution, and where AIMS are planning to go next with their AWS solutions. By the end of this half hour, you will have a great understanding of how AWS is helping customers like AIMS achieve amazing results that will have an incredibly positive impact on our world. The Great Barrier Reef provides enormous economic, environmental and societal benefits, not only to Australia, but to the world. Three main economic sectors benefit from coral reefs. Tourism, coastal development and commercial fisheries. All three will expect significant contraction as the coral crisis worsens. Hundreds of millions of people rely on coral reefs for nutrition, medicine and healthcare, recreation and livelihoods of coastal communities. Australia is a marine nation with 85% of the population living on the coastal fringe and a maritime industry worth 68 billion per annum. Reefs are a critical resource for many countries, reliant on for food security and a significant portion of GDP and a standard of living. Covering less than 0.1% of the ocean floor, Reefs host more than 25% of all marine fish species. Reefs are vital for coastline and flooding protection, providing risk reduction benefits to 197 million people facing natural disasters. So to preserve these benefits, it's important to sustain coral reef ecosystems. Coral reefs are increasingly under pressure. Human-induced climate change is taking coral reefs out of their comfort zone where they have thrived for hundreds of thousands of years. Australia's tropical marine ecosystems, like the Great Barrier Reef, are already experiencing the consequences of climate change. Due to climate change, Ames research reveals there will be increased occurrences of mass bleaching events of multiple reefs at the same time. Climate change is predicted to affect tropical marine systems in the following ways. Warmer sea surface temperatures will increase the risk of heat stress events and mass coral bleaching. Tropical cyclones are likely to be more intense, resulting in physical destruction and weakening of the reef structure. Extreme rainfall events will increase with larger amounts of low salinity fresh water and sediment extending further out from the coast Sea levels will gradually rise, affect, affecting coastal erosion, the magnitude of storm surges and the area available for shallow water marine organisms. And lastly, ocean circulation and upwelling patterns will change. At AWS, we are committed to helping our customers architect sustainably and we have a huge list of sustainability initiatives that you can read about in the presentation notes. We're excited to be working with organisations like the Australian Institute of Marine Science by helping them in their efforts to protect the Great Barrier Reef. As we move into the amazing work being carried out by Ames, I'd like to highlight this quote by Sir David Attenborough. Anything we can't do forever is, by definition, unsustainable.
The Australian Institute of Marine Science is Australia's tropical marine research agency. They play a pivotal role in providing large-scale, long-term and world-class research that helps governments, industry and the wider community to make informed decisions about the management of Australia's marine estate. AMS is a Commonwealth statutory authority. Their mission is to provide the research and knowledge of Australia's tropical marine estate required to support growth in its sustainable use, effective environmental management and protection of its unique ecosystems. The research leads to improved marine health and resilience, creates economic, environmental and societal benefits and protects coral reefs from climate change. The Australian Institute of Marine Science is headquartered in Townsville, North Queensland, and celebrates its 50th anniversary this year. As well as being an organisation focused on research, which supports the knowledge around climate change, AIMS is also well on its way to reducing their carbon footprint with numerous internal initiatives. AIMS' solar array generates around 1,000 kilowatts per hour, reducing the Institute's carbon footprint by 15%, or about 1,500 tonne per year. Not only does the system deliver environmental benefits, but it also delivers significant cost savings every year, which means AIMS can put more money back into science. When AIMS factor in the carbon intensity of consumed electricity and renewable energy purchases, which reduce associated carbon emissions, AWS performs the same task with an 88% lower carbon footprint. So by simply making the decision to move away from traditional data centres, AIMS is closer again to their ambitions of reducing their carbon footprint. I'd now like to introduce David Crossman, product owner for the Data Systems Engineering Team at the Australian Institute of Marine Science. David and the team have been working on a range of exciting research data systems initiatives using Amazon Web Services. David will be diving deep into a few of their projects, specifically focusing on Reef Cloud, what the project is and how they're solving with sustainable AWS architecture and how data is the central factor in achieving their aims. Over to you, David. Thanks, Lauren. It's great to be here. Science relies on data to inform decisions. At the Australian Institute of Marine Science, data is collected at sea and also in research labs and other on-site facilities. AIMS collect data to monitor coral reef systems, water quality, weather and ocean conditions, and large marine animals across Australia's tropical waters using two research vessels, remote operated vehicles, and sensors deployed in the field. An advanced aquarium facility called the National Sea Simulator is used to replicate current and future climate scenarios and develop ways to help corals adapt. Experiments in the sea simulator can run for multiple years and include coral seeding, reef stabilisation and the development of heat resistant corals to battle climate change. Data are analysed by scientists to produce research outputs like datasets, knowledge and methods which are used by governments as a foundation for environmental policy with the aim of managing the sustainable use of marine environments. In cases like this, the research is provided to government to aid in decision making processes around what the most effective levers to pull to maintain sustainable use of marine ecosystems. However, there are challenges in collecting data in the field. The Great Barrier Reef is the world's largest coral reef system, composed of over 2,900 individual reefs, stretching for over 2,300 kilometres over an area of approximately 344,400 square kilometres. The vast distances and area involved means that while Ames research vessels spend a lot of the year at sea, it can only survey a small percentage of the GBR each year. All this leads to very expensive and time-consuming data collection efforts that aren't very scalable, particularly for reef surveys. Regular reef surveys are an important method to understand reef health and trends. Ames research vessels visit about 120 reefs per year, which is about 4% of the total number of reefs in the GBR. Scientists are towed underwater around a reef recording what they see. It's basically a visual inspection by an expert. The reefs can be large, often around 10 kilometres in circumference. It takes about a day on average to do one reef. For 70 of those reefs, they also take photos along a 750 metre transect and after the trip, a coral reef ecologist will look at each photo and determine coral species and habitat at five points within the photo. 
This is a time consuming process of around three and a half hours per reef and yields on average 3,500 data points per reef from 700 photos. A particular reef might be surveyed once every two years and so this data represents a very small fraction of spatial and temporal coverage. Very clearly, the manual collection and analysis of coral reef imagery limits the amount of data that can be collected, not just for AIMS and the GBR, but for other countries surveying their own reef habitats. The Reef Cloud project looks to overcome some of these scalability issues by automating the analysis of coral reef imagery using artificial intelligence. By automating the processing of this coral reef imagery, research organisations around the world will be better placed to monitor their coral reefs more effectively and that will ultimately lead to better sustainability outcomes. Reef Cloud is a web-based application that allows scientists to upload images from their coral reef surveys. Images are processed using an AI model trained on over 10 years of high quality data. Additional training data to improve the AI model are then collected from scientists who can use the UI to manually annotate a subset of the images. A statistical model takes the machine and user generated data to produce a data set that is available for interactive visualization on a dashboard. Now for a deep dive into the ReefCloud architecture on AWS. The ReefCloud web UI allows users to upload their reef survey images and associated details about the survey, such as location information. They can organize these into projects and view their images. User events in the UI invoke RESTful web services on Amazon API Gateway to insert site, survey details, and image metadata to a Postgres Amazon RDS. They can also upload imagery to Amazon S3 storage via the use of a signed URL and it supports the annotation UI which collects additional training data from users doing visual assessments of imagery. Many of these API endpoints are implemented using AWS Lambda functions. The UI is supported by AWS organizations, Amazon Cognito, and Amazon Workmail to manage users and groups, and communication. Amazon Route 53, Amazon CloudFront, and AWS Amplify are used for the web application deployment. Once images are uploaded, an image pre-processing pipeline is triggered by Amazon EventBridge. This pipeline extracts feature vectors as part of image indexing for each of the selected points in the image. Using automated technologies, ReefCloud fast tracks the recording of changes to reef communities, helping interpret, report, and communicate on coral reef conditions across geographies. The fully automated pipeline enables much of this. Amazon EventBridge schedules image indexing, inferencing and retraining of the model, and typically this occurs on the hour. Amazon SQS is used to move data around and decouple things. AWS Batch is used to process data, to create feature vectors for each point of data, typically 50 records per image, and inference the entire data set of 60 million records, which is triggered when the model is updated, typically occurring when the new human annotations have been added and training has improved the model. Amazon S3 is used in inference runs to reduce the time to request indexes from a database. A cache of the dataset is stored on S3 to allow fast re-inferencing. This allows inference of the entire database to occur in minutes. All instances utilize spot pricing, and this reduces our costs and instance hours are relatively low, making the process more sustainable. ReefCloud promotes the integration of monitoring efforts to inform evidence-based management decisions. Data is aggregated in a standardized manner across predefined marine eco-regions or boundaries and presented for public consumption via a dashboard. Statisticians push Docker images of models to Amazon ECR. AWS Lambda generates input files for each model. Models then run on AWS Fargate, outputting files which are persisted to a database. In addition, input and output files are stored on Amazon EFS to allow for reprocessing and retention of results. AWS DataSync is used to move shapefiles to a mapping server running in a container to display the cyclones, wave, and temperature data. A public API is then available via a fast API deployed on AWS Lambda front-end with Amazon API Gateway. This is then all presented in a public-facing dashboard using an AWS Amplify front-end. Now let's see this action with a demo. AWS enables us to process our monitoring data at scale. Data is stored in an Amazon RDS Postgres instance, 
AWS Lambda is used to upload imagery to Amazon S3. Messages are stored on a FIFO queue containing image metadata on Amazon SQS. To increase the throughput on the queue, we process multiple images in a single message. This works well for a typical use case for the collection of field data, where a researcher collects data over a period of time, returns to base, and then uploads large batches of imagery. Our AI models are trained by reef ecologists, who typically classify five points on an image. Artificial intelligence then derives an additional 45 data points. AWS provide the compute power to process the data in a timely fashion. These two things combined make for faster, more effective decisions that are driven by increased levels of data. We can inference AIM's historical monitoring data more than 30 years worth in minutes, but there is a catch. Before we inference, we must use AWS Batch to index features from each point on an image. This is the most intensive compute and time operation in our pipeline. Batch was selected for this task as it can handle the scale and allows the process to run for longer periods. We create nearly all our infrastructure with code using AWS Cloud Development Kit. CDK makes it easy to automate and tear down environments, giving us flexibility to test and trial in sandbox environments. For our indexing batch job, we selected a compute environment of 30 C5 instances. Surprisingly, we did not need GPU for this task, which brought our costs down further. The batch job is started from a simple Lambda that is triggered from an event rule set in Amazon EventBridge. The Lambda then checks if there are messages on the queue. If so, indexing occurs. The resulting array of float values is then stored in Amazon RDS as a file in Amazon S3. The gain here is that when new data is added, a new model is trained, and we only have to append the new images to the data set. We can then re-inference the entire data set with a new model within a matter of minutes on a single C5 batch instance. We collaborated with teams of data scientists who created statistical models to process and aggregate the data based on spatial regions and covariate data. These models are pushed to Amazon ECR directly from a Git repo. We then run the models using serverless infrastructure on AWS Fargate. The inputs and outputs of the model are orchestrated in a workflow using AWS step functions. We visualize the environmental data spatially in the dashboard, namely thermal stress and cyclones two disturbances that have documented effects on coral reefs. These disturbances can then be cross-referenced with spatial layers to determine impact on individual reefs and regions. Large data and spatial files are migrated between source and destination locations using AWS DataSync. Data is then processed into usable formats by serverless functions written in Python. Resulting data is then stored in a Postgres Amazon RDS and made available through RESTful services fronted by Amazon API Gateway. The dashboard itself is an AWS Amplify application, allowing for easy connection to AWS services like Amazon Cognito for authentication and authorization, and Amazon S3 for storage. All this provides for an effective technical solution that also provides relevant information to researchers to make informed decisions about reef ecosystems. Some benefits of our implementation decisions include, we can process over 300,000 image points per hour, which is 300 times faster than manual processes and is fully automated. This leads to significant cost savings in manual annotation effort by scientists, freeing up their time for other research activities. A typical year's worth of imagery from AIMS can be processed in about an hour, allowing for significant upscaling of data collections in both numbers of images collected to increase spatial coverage, and an increase in data or information recovered per image. It also means the system can be expanded beyond the GBR to help other nations. In its current configuration, 10 times more data is extracted per image, leading to higher quality data sets. Consistency of the data across teams and organizations allows for data from many contributors around the world to be combined easily into global status reports on coral reef health. A lot of Reef Cloud architecture uses AWS serverless and managed services. As we don't need to manage these services ourselves, it increases the robustness of the system while lowering ongoing maintenance costs, particularly with security and upgrades. It also means the development team can focus more on coding solutions rather than setting up or implementing these services. Another benefit 
is that the AWS services allow us to dynamically scale up to support large increases in our data collections. With serverless architectures, you only pay for what you use, which fits well with our data collection and processing use patterns, where data are processed in batches upon return to shore and then sit idle. It also plays into our environmental sustainability considerations. Dr. Werner Vogels, VP and CTO of Amazon once said, every resource that you're not using is the greenest resource that you can think of. While ReefCloud solves data processing issues, a robotics project is underway to develop autonomous vehicles to complement existing labour-intensive data collection methods based on scientific divers. This will result in large volumes of images collected in the field for which we intend to use AWS Snowcone or AWS Snowball devices to transfer to ReefCloud. As it becomes unfeasible to transfer this amount of data over remote networks in a timely fashion. Meanwhile, an AWS IoT core solution will deliver real-time data streams from experiments in the National Sea Simulator to a global network of researchers. Together with other research data, ReefCloud and the National Sea Simulator data will be available to researchers and data scientists via the Ames Data Cloud platform, where they will be able to visualize and access data streams for analysis through a range of data exploration tools and APIs. The use of APIs in particular will streamline access to data for data scientists to fast track innovation and research. This provides a powerful solution where solu scientists can develop and simulate various environmental interventions and advise decision makers on the best ones to implement. From there, intensive reef monitoring solutions can track the effectiveness on these interventions and lead to better environmental outcomes that sustain future economic and societal benefits. Reefs ecosystems are important and need to be sustainable so that Australia and other marine dependent nations can continue to leverage the economic and societal benefits they offer. Reef Cloud and the National Sea Simulator and other emerging solutions are helping researchers all over the world understand complex marine ecosystems to discover the best ways to help them adapt to climate change and other pressures. The automation of time consuming image analysis by experts makes large scale reef monitoring affordable for all nations. Implementing our data solutions using AWS provides opportunities for reduced implementation costs, lean ongoing running costs, and results in a more robust, maintainable product. Throughout the project, AWS have been helpful in advising on optimizing the product to reduce costs and helped gain access to sustainability initiatives. Finally, I'd like to thank Lauren and the team at AWS, technical partners at Accenture, and all the coral reef researchers who have helped with the project. Thank you for listening. And back to you, Lauren. Thanks so much, Dave. It's really wonderful to see all of the tremendous work Ames are doing to help our Great Barrier Reef thrive into the future and all while using cutting edge AWS technologies. If anyone watching would like to learn more or get started on AWS, you can scan the QR codes on the screen. The first link is to our Sustainability in the Cloud website and is full of information on the steps AWS are making to be more sustainable. It has useful blog posts, resources, information on the Amazon Sustainability Data Initiative, and more. The second link, Technologies for Sustainability, helps you to get started using sustainable architectures on AWS and details a large range of use cases that you can read and learn from. They are both terrific resources, and I encourage you to take a look. You can also find out more information about the recently released Sustainability Well-Architected Pillar. To continue your cloud journey, please use these training resources. Ames is an excellent example of a customer who have really utilized these resources for their own internal staff training. This has helped them accelerate their AWS skills and thus being highly self-sufficient with the technologies. Thank you so much for spending your time with us today. We hope you learned something valuable. We really value your feedback to help us improve our sessions so please share your out of five rating with us. Have a terrific day.